you know, it was for me, I got to tell you, it was, it, it's been an entertaining weekend because it, it, watching the talking heads on television, or if you catch anybody on radio or somebody writing, they're all talking about Tua and they're going, whoa, he looks better and he looks more athletic and he looks more comfortable and all of this stuff. And I, I laugh at it because this is what we talked about months ago that I told you that people are going to say this about Tua because last year we jumped the, no, not we, I'm sorry. Some folks out there, some doll fans, and then a lot of idiot pundits out there across the nation were ripping on Tua and, and really not looking at everything the way it's supposed to be. Because when you think about it, we're talking about a kid that didn't have an offense built for him, was a backup, was coming in off a of hip surgery, and an offensive coordinator that was really focused on fits, not on him. Right? And so that all of this, nobody ever took that, the naysayers, okay, the doubters. Because, uh, you know, it's for people to think that what the kid did last year was easy. What he did last year was miraculous. It was freaking awesome. The guy had hip surgery in late November and was able to be ready for September. I mean, you want toughness? Not that I want him to do this more often or anything like that. But in the game on Saturday night, He's going for yardage, and he dives for the yardage. Yeah, I want him to slide. You know what I'm saying? But it shows you that the kid is tough, and he's always trying to make plays and trying to help his team out. And last year, he felt it was his responsibility to get back out on the field and get healthy, and he worked his ass off to be able to get on the field in August and September, which – Nobody gave him, well, at least the naysayers didn't give him credit. And the kid ends up with a winning record, throws more touchdowns and interceptions, and all we get are people trying to tear him down. Instead of actually looking at the big picture, macro, not micro, remember that's, we talk a lot about that, and you look at it and you say, well, wait a minute, considering everything that this kid did, it's pretty amazing what he's been able to accomplish this year. That's what should have been said about Tua. But instead, the uninformed or the folks that are just completely way the F off, they compare him to Herbert. Herbert, who had an offseason, at least, where he could throw the football with his teammates, not rehab from a hip surgery. He was the starter. He was the guy. I mean, their doctors punctured the lung of their starter. So it forced the kid to start. So they had everything for him. So it was designed for him that he had excellent receivers, better than Miami's receivers, that's for sure. He had every other advantage that Miami did. And yet, Tua had more quality wins than Herbert. But see, this is the problem. And, and the theme has been the whole weekend, right? They're jamming on the offensive line. They don't give the offensive line time to gel. They played better this week. And I know, and I know Atlanta sat some guys. I get all of that, but you still have to go out there and execute and play well. And they did that. You know, oh, they're picking on Eichenberg. Eichenberg played well this past week. But, but what do we? It's this microwave society bullshit that we got to deal with all the time. That everything has got to happen overnight, and it's not going to happen overnight. Sometimes it takes Cam Wake to go to the CFL to find his way back to the NFL. You know, it's it's funny. Sometimes Mark Dixon has to go to the CFL. Maybe now it's Sam Aguavon. Maybe Sam Aguavon is, is, is now coming into his own. I don't know. None of us know. But I, I do know this. To think that everybody is going to make an instant transition, it's just wrong. And it's, and it's really uh, unrealistic. And that's what happened last year, and that's what's happened all offseason. Tua has gotten criticism that he just does not deserve. And now you're watching a kid that has been able to play football offs all offseason, throw to his receivers, study the playbook, his playbook, his offense with his coaches. And so all of a sudden now you watch him and he's super comfortable there. He's commanding the offense. He's 
showing leadership, communicating with his teammates. If something goes wrong or something goes right, he's right there. Everything that you're watching from Tua is what we call an evolution of a player, a development of a player. And I, I think what's developing is a franchise freaking quarterback is what's happening here for the Miami Dolphins. But sometimes it just doesn't happen overnight, and especially when you're coming off a of hip surgery. And that's why I laugh now when I hear people say, well, he looks so much better now. His arm is livelier, this and that. Well, what do you expect, dude? He, he got hurt in the core of his body. They sliced you up. Anybody been operated before? How do you feel for a couple of days, couple of weeks, maybe even a couple months? Or how about this? Sometimes you feel it for the rest of your life. When they cut you up, a lot of times you're never the same again. And they cut him up on the hip. You think that you think that's that's not painful? You think that it doesn't take a while to be able to recover from all of that fully? It's going to take a while. Now is when he's going to really feel it. Now he's going to be at his best. You think last year he was at his best? Of course not. But he was good enough to get into NFL games. That's the part. That's why I kept coming off of last season saying I was marveled by Tua. Because if there was a year for him to actually look like absolute dog crap, it was last year. And he didn't. He played well. He had good moments. Yeah, he had some negative moments, but of course, he's a rookie. And a rookie with physical limitations. Think about that. He has physical limitations, and he has also limitations on the offense because he didn't really know the playbook. And he, was, he wasn't the guy getting all the number one reps. It helps when you're getting all the number one reps, man. That was Fitz, and that was Herbert. But nobody takes, not, I'm sorry, again, I, I almost said that. Some folks out there did not take that into account. And plenty of pundits also. And now they're all eating effing crow. And look, I'm not going to go overboard and tell you he's arrived. But I, I've already gone out on a limb and told you, I, I think the kid's going to be a stud. I said it last year, and I'm going to say it again this year. But it just, you got to give the young man some time. And he isn't even playing with all his weapons yet. And he looks comfortable as hell. He's playing with several guys that probably aren't even going to make the damn roster. 